Okay, for the second video, we're going to focus specifically on structural unemployment. Now, structural unemployment exists when there is a mismatch between uh, the skills of those people who are out of work and the requirements of the new job opportunities. So people are out of work, they have some skills, but the skills aren't necessarily the ones that are needed. And this can make it very hard for people who have those skills, who desperately want to work to successfully overcome the barriers to getting a new job. That leads to a structural economic problem. And often those people experiencing structural unemployment are out of work for a lengthy time. We use a concept called long-term unemployment, and this measures uh, people who have been out of work for at least a year, often much longer. Part of the reason for structural unemployment are changes in the economy, including something called deindustrialization. Uh, in other words, the decline in manufacturing output as a share of a country's national income. Uh, that's happened for many countries, including the UK. Both emerging and advanced countries have seen a decline, a fall of their manufacturing sectors, uh, becoming less important for national incomes and employment. Uh, have a look at this chart, for example, you go back to the 1980s, manufacturing, heavy industry made up more than a quarter of GDP for many countries. Now that figure is in decline, even in countries like China, it's gone down from 40% to 30%. In the UK, it's gone down from 25% to 9%. So a fall in the share of manufacturing can lead to structural unemployment. Uh, particularly for workers in industries such as steelmaking, shipbuilding and uh, engineering. Uh, coal mining is often used as a good example of structural unemployment. This chart uh, quite graphically shows the number of people employed in the coal mining industry in the UK from 1920 all the way through to 2018. And you can see that the steep, steep decline, the very, very heavy decline, including the effective closure of the coal mines from the mid-1980s onwards. Photo is the old head gear, the mining gear, the pit equipment of Hatfield Colliery, uh, which is in South Yorkshire. And coal miners of, and the communities in which they live have often suffered very high unemployment as a result. So structural unemployment is, in a, in a broader sense, is about the barriers, the hurdles that people face trying to find new work. They're often desperate to work. They want to work. They need to have that regular source of income coming into the family home. But there are often big barriers to finding work. Let me pick out five for you. First is one we've already mentioned, uh, that new jobs in the labour market, and there always are new jobs, often they require specific skills, new skills, and extra qualifi uh, qualifications. And those jobs might therefore need additional training, including professional exams, for example, vocational courses, which can actually be quite costly for people on low incomes. Another barrier is the very high cost of and limited availability of childcare, which can limit uh, the number of women who can go out to work, for example. The cost of commuting to and from work is often prohibitive. And the housing sector can operate as a big barrier to finding work. Unaffordable homes, either to rent or to buy, limits the geographical mobility of people searching for work. And linked to that, Another barrier is the fact that many of the jobs in the economy, particularly in the service sector, are relatively low paid and offer insecure incomes. They may be on temporary contracts or zero hours contracts, and therefore the returns to working uh, may not be sufficiently high to incentivize people to overcome the barriers and take new jobs. So these are some of the causes of structural unemployment. And a particular aspect of this is youth unemployment. Uh, youth unemployment, people who are the, under the ages of 24. Uh, this chart shows youth unemployment in the UK. And certainly in the last recession, it became a significant problem. You can see this. If we add together the number of people who are unemployed aged between 16 and 17 and 18 to 24, uh, that gives you the total figure for youth unemployment, which in 2018, I think, was 11.5% uh, compared to about 14% for the EU. Now, in some countries, youth unemployment is, is appallingly high. In countries like South Africa and Greece and Spain, youth unemployment is over 60% of the youth age cohort.
Now, youth unemployment has come down in the UK over, over recent times. The big fear, of course, is that youth unemployment may well start rising sharply uh, in the current recession. So why is youth unemployment a big problem? Well, clearly, if you're young and unemployed, uh, that can have lifetime effects on your expected incomes. It makes it much harder to save regularly uh, for a new car, for a mortgage, for example. There are significant potential social costs from, from persistently high unemployment, including increased risk of, of crime and, and uh, deviant behaviour. There are increased risks of social alienation arising from lack of participation in the labour market. And we're getting a better feel now for the health impacts long term, including the impact, the consequences for mental health if young people are out of productive work for a length of time. So youth unemployment is a major issue. Uh, it's part of the structural problems in the UK. Uh, just going back a little bit, I think I was looking this week that in fact 10% of workers in the UK under 30 have probably or definitely already lost their job in the last month or two. Uh, whereas older workers uh, are at less risk, lesser risk of losing their job just at the moment. In part, that's because a lot of young people work in tourism and hospitality uh, where there have been so many um, closures of shops and, and outlets. Now, in our third video, uh, we'll look at a related issue, and that is the impact of automation, including robotics, on the future of work and also what it might mean for unemployment.